Hello, welcome back at my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show how to calculate the height above the nearest drainage or hand. I will use the PC Raster Tools plugin in QGIS. And we start with the DEM from SRTM, which has been clipped to a smaller area. The start of the procedure is the same as calculating the flow accumulation because we are going to derive the rivers using the flow accumulation first. We need to work in the PC raster format, so I choose from data management, convert to PC raster format, and I choose as an output data type scalar because it's a continuous raster, and I call it DEM. The next step is to calculate the flow direction map or local drain direction map. You can do that with the LDD create tool. The input is the DEM. We keep the defaults to fill all the sinks and I call the output LDD. As you've seen in another video, we can calculate the flow accumulation, but we need uh, a material layer of uh, scalar value 1 to accumulate the amount of pixels. That's what we need, so we don't need as an input rainfall or something else. So here with the spatial tool I can create a raster which has value 1 in the scalar data type. And then in the Aquiflux algorithm I can use the LDD map and this new material layer. And I call the output flow accumulation. Now to derive the rivers, you normally need to calibrate this with a, a map, a reference layer, which has the river or a satellite image. But uh, here I'll use a threshold that I've determined before. I need to create a scalar layer with the threshold value. So I use here 30,000. Again, you need to calibrate this, so it will not be 30,000 in all cases. Call it scalar. And I'll save this as uh, flow accumulation threshold. So again, the result will be a raster with this value in the scalar format for all cells in the raster. Now I can calculate the rivers using a conditional. I use a comparison operator where I say flow accumulation is larger or equal than the flow accumulation threshold. And I can save this as a river. So the result will be a Boolean layer with the rivers. Let's quickly style these rivers using the palleted unique values renderer. Remove the zero so we only have the ones where the rivers are. And there we see it on the DEM. The next step is to calculate the catchment of each pixel of the drainage. And therefore I need to give each pixel a unique ID. You can do that with the unique ID tool, which results in a scalar map with for each Boolean true pixel a unique ID. Let's style it. Here we see that now each river pixel has a unique ID and all the non-river pixels have a value 0. To calculate the subcatchments, we need to um, have those IDs in a different format. They need to be nominal. So I'm going to convert the data type from ID scalar to ID nominal. And this results in exactly the same map, but then with each unique value as a nominal. Now we can use the subcatchment tool to calculate the catchment of each unique value of the drainage. We use the LDD as an input and we use ID nominal as the outlet layer. And let's call the output subcatchment. So each subcatchment now has the same value as the ID of its outlet. We can style that, and we can also copy the style to the outlets 
to do a quick check if it's the same. You have to remove the zeros because the zeros have not been used as the subcatchments. And now if I zoom in and I switch on and off ID nominal, I see that there's no difference, which means it's exactly the same. Now we can calculate the elevation of the drainage by choosing the minimum elevation in each zone. So I use here a subcatchment as the zones and I use the DEM as uh, the raster from which we want to know the minimum value in each zone. And I call the output Z drainage. Here's the result. And now we can calculate uh, hand because that will be the value of the DEM minus the elevation of the drainage. I call the output hand. And this is the result. So here for each pixel we know the uh, height above the drainage. In a similar way we could calculate the ridges, but the ridges are shared, so that's a bit more complicated. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also check the free course materials at GISopencourseware.org. And I hope to see you again next time.